Greetings War Thunderers, this is Longshot, with a guide to flying the Russian Premium Hurricane in Arcade. This is a Hurricane 2B. It's Tier 2, with a current arcade battle rating of 3.0. It cost me a thousand gold eagles to purchase, which makes it one of the cheaper Tier 2 premiums. It's unique due to its weaponry. The Russians weren't impressed by the original banks of light machine guns, stripping them out and replacing them with two 20mm Shavak cannon, supported by two 12.7mm Berezins. So the Stalin cane packs quite a punch. In fact, its hitting power comes close to that of the Sea Hurricane Mark 1C with its four Hispanos. However, this plane has a much lower battle rating and a superior flight model to the 1C. Now, Tier 2 premiums aren't much good for grinding. For that, you want a Tier 3 or Tier 4 plane. So the question I'd ask when considering a Tier 2 premium is whether it's fun to fly. And I can tell you right now that my answer to that question is an emphatic yes. This is a really enjoyable plane in Arcade, possibly the most effective Hurricane variant in the game right now. So, let's take a look at the plane, starting with its armour. Now, not bad for a Tier 2 plane, decent protection behind and in front of the pilot. The X-ray shows the vital components are tightly clustered together, which makes most of them hard to hit, making this plane more durable than most fighters. So let me put it through its paces in a test flight. And by the way, its flight model is identical to the British Hurricane 2B, so everything I show here applies to that plane as well. Here's my setup, 400 meters convergence and stealth belts for both cannons and machine guns. The plane does not carry a great deal of speed when it spawns, but it doesn't matter too much, as its ideal climbing speed is very low, between 220 and 230 kilometers an hour, which is 136 to 143 miles per hour. And in two weps, that will get you right up to a bomber spawn altitude uh, around 4,000 metres or 12,000 feet, and that is a surprisingly good climb rate for a hurricane. OK, next I'll look at the roll speed, and I'll compare it to the Spitfire Mark IIb. No surprises here. The hurricane is not great at rolling, and the Spitfire easily outperforms it. So let's look at how they go in a horizontal turn, with flaps raised. The hurricane is doing better. Though not by much, but it's certainly not turning fast enough to compete with zeros or biplanes. Most importantly, it's holding over 300 km an hour. I was afraid it might bleed too much of its speed in a sustained turn, but that's not the case. But let's see how it goes with both combat and landing flaps, and with so much information on the screen, you might have to watch this a couple of times. Combat flaps decrease the speed, however the turn rate is unchanged. But landing flaps cut the speed drastically and ruin the plane's turning ability, so it'd be suicide to use them in a battle. I'll just uh, persevere with the combat flaps for another turn, to see how well it maintains its speed. If it stays fairly constant, then it could be worthwhile using them in a dogfight, provided it doesn't go too much into vertical manoeuvres. And it seems to stabilise around 280 km an hour, which isn't too bad. In arcade elevators are only half the story, so let's look at the strength of its rudder, and once again I'll compare with the Spitfire 2B, while also showing the Hurricane using elevators, and once again you can see the power of rudder in arcade. Both planes are now easily outturning the Hurricane that's using elevators alone, and the Spitfire is doing the best. And that highlights a limitation of the Hurricane. Against your average pilot using elevators, it has a distinct advantage, but there are a lot of planes that will outturn the Hurricane if their pilots know how to use the rudder key. So while this is a good turn fighter, it is not the best, and it can be defeated in a dogfight, so I can't quite use the same tactics that I would for an A6M or a Chika. Moving along, I'll put the plane into a dive to look at its high-speed handling. With its thick wings, the plane only reaches a comparatively slow speed of 680 km an hour in the dive, but its roll rate remains fairly constant even at those speeds, making this a viable plane to use in relatively short diving attacks. As you can see, I have no trouble adjusting and getting guns on this biplane. But hurricanes are unsuited to long, shallow dives. They're simply not fast enough, and if you change direction with the mouse, they'll lift the nose and lose their speed. I was already below 600 km an hour before lifting into this vertical climb, which I'll use to measure how much altitude it can recover before dropping below 200 km an hour. And as I started the climb at 500 metres altitude, it barely gains a kilometre, which is not impressive at all. Though it does sustain the climb for another 500 metres before I have to hammerhead the plane. Which it does best using elevators rather than rudder, and it performs the turn quickly with no loss of control. 
but despite the Starling Kane's shortcomings as a boom and zoomer, I'll show you some of my experiences with it at bomber altitude first, and some of you might find this a little surprising. What do most pilots think when they see a hurricane at 4,000 or 5,000 metres? One of two things. Either they regard it as an easy kill, or just a nuisance to be ignored while they attack bombers. And that's what this pair of Russian planes are doing, paying me no attention whatsoever as they engage the G4M1. And Shavaks work really well when you have a deflection shot like this. Just make sure you allow extra lead distance ahead of the indicator. I'm just watching that 185 to see if he'll helicopter up at me or the bomber, but he saw a PBY toward the centre of the battlefield and decided to climb and attack. And while the Hurricane isn't the fastest plane on the battlefield, I'm easily doing over 400 km an hour in level flight, which is quicker than what a lot of players expect. Certainly quick enough to intercept that 185. And that's two planes who completely ignored me and paid the price, and here's a third. I don't know, perhaps they assume I'm carrying light machine guns like a British Hurricane, and they soon find out otherwise. OK, so that's high altitude secured for my team in this battle. And as you can see, I have a lot of bombers to protect from the likes of this Stuka who's trying to shoot them down. On approach, I get a brief shot at the SM-79, which again highlights how devastating these weapons are. And that kind of high-speed pass is what you want when attacking bombers. Never let yourself get stuck on a bomber's tail, eating up its rounds from its gunners, which happens easily with this plane due to its overall lack of speed. And look, there's another helicoptering fighter going for the easy PBY kill beneath me, and completely ignoring my plane. And this battle was not an isolated example. I've had numerous games where I've climbed with the Stalin Kane, and been totally ignored for an entire battle while racking up the kills. Or when I am noticed, people try to go head on, and when that fails, they try to turn fight, as was the case in this domination battle, where I climbed and then gradually pushed lower, trying to bait people into attacking me. But so far in this battle, nobody has taken the bait. All I'm succeeding in doing is getting the hang up around a thousand metres for a little while before they give up, and dive to the ground level, as this Focke 190 is doing. And if this goes on too long, I eventually give up and drop into the furball myself. Indeed, that's what I was considering in this battle, but I decided to press further toward the enemy fighter spawn first. If you've seen my recent montage video on the A6Ms, you'll know the tactic I'm talking about hanging a few kilometres in front of the spawn, a thousand metres or so above spawn altitude, where I'm the first target people see when they spawn into the game. It's more difficult to pull off in this plane as it loses energy faster than a zero and isn't quite as good a turn fighter, but it still can be a lot of fun. But I'm not going to get that far as a Spitfire 5B has me targeted, approaching for a head-on, which he's unlucky enough to lose. And yes, he was unlucky. Over the last few weeks, I haven't had much success hitting targets at all in head-ons, let alone shooting them down. But if he'd survived the head-on, the next step would have been a dogfight, where because of my altitude advantage, the odds would be stacked in my favour. Watching the planes streaming past below, it seems I've hooked another fish, in the form of a Yak-9T. He's steadily climbing up, but then seems to change his mind with a turn to the right. There he goes. So I decide to switch onto the Wellington, which should be safe enough to engage as it's going to be flying away from the Yak-9. But I only get a brief burst in here, which doesn't do any real damage, and then the Yak-9's charging up at me, so I have to let the Welly go. He's too close to risk a shot at him in the head-on, so I simply evade, and then it's clear that I have a sizable energy advantage, which is no surprise given that he pulled a horizontal turn before committing to the attack, and he's now turning horizontally again. And he's using elevator rather than rudder, so I could easily get inside the turn and drop down for the kill. OK, now I have a Spit, the Spitfire Beak pilot uh, climbing up for revenge in a Firefly, but in the distance is a much more significant threat. Motox Blue Dog side climbing in a Spitfire 2B. And it wasn't long before he was engaging me with an energy advantage of his own, and this time I have no luck in the head-on. I'm into a high yo-yo, hoping to turn and drop down on him from above, but he's maintained his speed, which is important in a Spitfire, and this is starting to look rather dangerous from my point of view. My high yo-yo cost me a lot of speed, I only just avoid his guns. But then he turns back using elevators, not rudder, and that's going to play into my hands. He switches back the other way, and then into a split S. But it's all elevators only, which means I can outturn him. 
Unfortunately though, I'm not going to get the chance. The Firefly is almost in gun's range, and I'm again incredibly lucky in a head-on. Though I do have to go evasive for a few seconds in case he still had control of his plane. And the Spitfire has taken that opportunity to recover and attack with an energy advantage. And here I make a mistake. I spiral climb after the snap roll, something you should only do if you're travelling faster than your opponent, or they're right on your tail. And this is going to cost me, as it takes out my tail controls. It's very difficult to dogfight without uppy downies, but even so I did survive a decent burst of Hispanos then, which would probably have killed most planes. A testament to this plane's survivability. But that example shows the limitations of the Hurricane as a dogfighter, particularly if you try vertical manoeuvres as I did against the Spitfire, and ended up losing my speed and paying the price. OK, this is the last battle I'm going to show you, and as you can see, I'm flying in a squad with a group of skilled pilots who are all using faster planes. And while this wasn't a perfect battle on my part by any means, it was a hell of a lot of fun, which is what this plane is all about. So, where are we? We've all climbed up to uh, bomber altitude, a bit above. Looking down there to see if there's any climbers coming up. We have a P-38 in the distance and my faster friends are going to get there first. So I'm going to start to work a bit lower and see if I can find any climbers coming up through the clouds. And there are a few planes looking interesting. Spitfire in particular. Potentially one of those P-47s, but the Spitfire is definitely a target right now. So I'm just going to drop down. He's going into a bit of a turn. I decide to pull up because behind me is a P-47. So I'm into a spiral climb to the left, just waiting until there's a hint that he's stalled out. It's very hard in the clouds. I can't see his plane, so I don't know what he's doing. OK, now I'm definitely going to get a shot at him here. Looks like he's stalled. He's trying to dive away. But yeah, he was in real trouble there, and that lets me carry straight onto the Spitfire as well. And that will be enough to take him down. And then from 2,700 metres, I'm quickly back up to regain a bit of altitude. So that's two very quick kills, a nice way to start the game. And I'm uh, trailing a few friends behind me, I've got a 109, potentially some others. So I'll just hang up here at the top of my zoom climb, and there goes Courtney taking him out. P400 is following him up, so I'm thinking about diving in on him, but Setch is onto the scene faster than me, and he will get the kill there. And that just uh, kind of highlights a bit of a problem in this plane if you're flying with friends or, or even uh, blue planes who are up at altitude and faster than you uh, it can be very fruitless flying around up here because you simply can't get to the kills before other people take them out and seeing that that's how this game was very likely to unfold I decided it was much more worth my while to work down to a lower altitude so in my previous battles I've shown in this video the first one was at high altitude the second one lower down sort of trying to uh, troll people into climbing at me in this one, I'm going right down to the deck. So you have all the variety covered in this video. OK, so I have a P-39 over there. He's flying uh, sort of away from me. I am actually running him down. And beneath there is uh, Henkel 112, who's already gone lower down to the deck. So, P-39 is the main target, if I can get into gun's range. No one's behind me. I picked a nice gap in the traffic with which to dive down. Now the P-39's engaging other people, so I'm going to switch onto the Henkel. Get a nice deflection shot from above. Shavaks do the rest and then straight on to the P-47. And it's going to be the same story there. Another two nice kills. Now I'll just back out because I knew there was another plane in the area. There he is. And now it's just a matter of practicing situational awareness. Keeping track of where all the planes are around me. Getting deflection shots in particular where possible. I want to avoid sitting on anyone's tail at all costs. Also I want to avoid being jumped by someone at high speed that I don't see coming. If I can do that, and if I can hang around where friendlies are so I'm not isolated against a group of planes, then I should be good for multiple kills down here. See the light. Down he goes. And really this is all about the guns. If I was using the uh, British Hurricane, I doubt I would have had so many kills so quickly. The guns are what really gets work done down here. OK, so I have this P-39 on my left going to focus on him. Not sure what happens to the other guy, he seems to disappear. P-39 sees me coming, but he's intent on farming ground targets. He's not paying me any real mind at all. Another deflection shot. Don't get the kill straight away. But then a critical enough, enough of a critical I mean, to send him into the cliff. The other guy has disappeared somewhere, so I'm just going to climb around the cliffs here. 
see if I can uh, pop over the top of the hill and rejoin the battle by surprise. I really should be reloading my guns. It's, if there's one real flaw in my flying, it's that I continually forget to reload. You'd think after all this time, I would have learned. Never mind. Okay, I'm just webbing in to accelerate. We've got a Henkel down there who's taking on an Ishak. No one is on the Henkel. So I'm just going to get behind him here. We're completely alone, there's no one else around. Critical. Central gear leg, of course. What else would it be? I can outturn him. So I may as well just hang here because we're isolated, and I'm lucky enough to get the kill before I'm out of cannon. One round left on both cannon and machine guns. So that's eight kills. Time to back off. Moving ahead a bit. We have a hurricane dog fighting around with a lot of uh, friendlies down here. Notice no one yet has picked me out. I've been uh, able to just intercept. Too slow on that hurricane. Able to just intercept and um, then back off into clouds of friendlies or back off into friendly territory, hide in the hills, and then come out and intercept again. And that's a really good way to fly this plane. You don't want to get caught up in a dogfight if you can possibly help it. Not down at ground level, because it's just so easy for, you, for people to, um, to isolate you and, and take you out when you don't even see them coming. A poor little BF-109B. I feel sorry for those planes whenever I see them in the game. I'll ignore him because we have a Yak-9M. What was the other plane? P-38. 9M is ignoring me. He's perhaps lucky to survive that. And now he's into a dogfight. Is he using rudder? It's the first question I look at whenever I see someone dogfighting me. If I can see the full profile of their plane as they're turning, as I can there, then he's using elevators. And... which means I have a huge advantage. A Yak could probably outturn me using rudder. Never going to outturn a Hurricane using elevators. So that's right near the end of the game. The uh, enemy is starting to run very low of planes now. Uh, Yak-3 coming in, so that's a bit of a faster plane to try and take on. The main question with the Yak-3 is whether I can actually get within range of him in a hurricane. I need him to attack me, rather than uh, vice versa. So he's trying to climb underneath. Let's see how we go. Very difficult rolling turn, and my guns suddenly are not doing the work I'd, I'm accustomed to. I'm right on his tail, but I need that deflection shot. Can't quite pull enough lead before someone else gets the kill in front of me. But I think it was just a matter of time. I almost had him. But this uh, buffalo is the last plane in the air. And this will be kill number 10. I'm determined to get double figures. Because double figures mean something to me. I don't know why. Double ace in the day, or what have you. So anyway, diving in from above. He's going to pull out in front, so deflection shot, only a hit. He's a faster roller than my plane. I have a lot more energy than him, so up into a high yo-yo. Very hard for him to keep track of where I am. Dropping down above for another deflection shot, and down he goes. And yes, that was a rare battle for me, as far as my YouTube vids are concerned anyway. I don't often post videos where I clean up at ground, out, uh, ground level. And I hope it's given you a good idea of how to fly, not only the Starlin Kane, but any of the Hurricane uh, variants, especially the British 2B, which has exactly the same flight model. And for myself, I'm glad I own this plane. Not because it's overpowered or helps much with the grind, but because it's just very different from most of the planes in the Russian tree, and, well, it just gives me a lot of enjoyment whenever I fly it. In my next video, I plan to add to my Beginner's Guide series with a look at how to get the most out of using flaps, both in arcade and realistic, and I'll follow that up with a return to my Analyze This series, where I will examine a dogfight between a Spitfire and a Boomerang. So until then, this is Longshot signing off. Good hunting everyone, and I will be seeing you in the skies.